And so poor Clerval is killed because of his quest for knowledge. Now, after Victor destroys the new creation that he is making and he makes it to Ireland, he is then accused of the death of Clerval. And this is another instance of the duality that I spoke of before because we know, we know that the creature has, clear, clear, uh, has killed Clerval, but Victor is the one who is uh, going to be brought to trial for Clerval's death. And of course, in that roundabout way, even though Victor later says, I am guiltless, Victor is partially responsible. <laughs> I wanted to talk about responsibility, but I'm going to hold off. But at the end of chapter 23, Victor says to the magistrate on this theme of knowledge, Man, I cry, how ignorant art thou in thy pride of wisdom. Cease, you know not what it is you say. Now Victor is, even though he's, he's disparaging other people for what it is that they think they know, He's doing the same thing because he's saying, I know more than you do. And, and to some, he's saying, you don't want to know what I know. But, but it's kind of a hodgepodge, kind of hypocritical or, I don't know, perhaps Victor would say it's paradoxical, but I consider it rather uh, hypocritical. But on the theme of, um, of knowledge, I have some more to say, of course. And in chapter 24... It is on 2.27 on uh, mine. We've not heard a lot from Walton. Walton has been busy writing down what Victor says. And now we come back to that scene on the ship that is immured in the ice. It's stuck in the ice as were many ships during this time period. And they were trying to find a northwest passage or trying to find that paradise uh, to the north. But at any rate, we come back to that scene where the book began and, of course, where the book ends. And Victor, uh, Walton is, thinks that Victor is just great, thinks he's a noble man. And there's also a duality between those two as well. And I can't remember if I talked about that in the last video or not. I'm getting old and senile. But at any rate, there is a duality between the two. Um, and on uh, page 227 in my book, and Walton has been writing to his sister again, he, he said, Sometimes I endeavor to gain from Frankenstein's the particular of his creature's formation, but on this point he was impenetrable. Are you mad, my friend, said he, or whither does your senseless curiosity lead you? Would you also create for yourself and the world a demonical enemy? Peace, peace. Learn from my miseries and do not seek to increase your own. So Walton wants to know, hey, how did you do this? And Victor says, oh, man, you can't handle the truth. You do not want to know. So leave it alone. And then more on this duality between Walton and Victor on the next page. He says, um, Victor says, when younger said he, Victor, I believe myself destined for some great enterprise. My feelings are profound, but I possessed a coolness of judgment that fitted me for illustrious achievements. And then a few um, sentences later, he said, I could not rank myself with the herd of common projectors. And then all my speculations and hopes are as nothing. And like the archangel who expired to omnipotence, and he's talking about Satan there, I am chained to an eternal hell. And then a few sentences later, I trod heaven in my thoughts, now exulting in my powers, now burning with the idea of their effects. From my infancy, I was imbued with high hopes and a lofty ambition. But how am I sunk? Oh, my friend, if you had known me as I once was, you would not recognize me in this state of degradation. Despondency rarely visited my heart. A high destiny seemed to bear on me until I fell, never, never to rise again. And back at the beginning of the book, Walton, too, spoke about how he felt destined uh, for some great adventure, uh, discovery, or whatever. 
And so he and Walton and Victor, Victor share that in common as well. And uh, over on, uh, let me find where I am, same chapter. Oh, before I get to my note here, uh, there is something else on page 232 in my book. Victor again shows that hypocrisy because the sailors come to Walton and they say, we want to turn around and go back. We don't want any more of this. It's, it's scary. You're going to kill us all. And Victor says to the men, what do you mean? What do you demand of your captain? Are you then so easily turned from your design? Do you not call this a glorious expedition? And wherefore was it glorious? So while he's telling Walton, learn from my experience, he's saying to the men, what are you, cowards? It doesn't jive. It just doesn't jive. And he even says to them, you were hereafter to be hailed as the benefactors of your species. Does that sound familiar? Uh, but then on the uh, on page 234, uh, Walton writes, The die is cast. I have consented to return if we are not destroyed. Thus are my hopes blasted by cowardice and indecision. I come back ignorant and disappointed. It requires more philosophy that I possess to bear this injustice with patience. So Victor, uh, excuse me, Walton decides to, when they are free from the ice, that he is going to go back to England. And he says that he is going to remain ignorant, but it is this choice to remain ignorant that is going to save his life and save the life of his men. Even though just a short time before, Victor was saying, what do you mean you're going to turn back? Walton has learned his lesson. He has listened to Victor you know, rant and rave now for, I, I'm not quite sure, I, I would have to go back and look at the dates of the letters. He's listened to him now for at least days. And he seems to have learned something. And so um, he is uh, going to turn back and go back home and remain ignorant. And Victor is still saying, I've been occupied examining my past contact, nor do I find it blamable. In a fit of enthusiastic madness, I created a rational creature and was bound toward him to assure, as far as was in my power, his happiness and well-being. That was my duty. But then he goes on to say that his allegiance towards humans was stronger. He still, still does not say, well, yeah, if I'd have stuck around and, and, and raised him, that perhaps this would have uh, happened, not have happened. Just never seemed to learn, did he?